uh, we are given in this example that uh, to analyze this given beam uh, and we have to use the stiffness method okay we have to use the stiffness method uh, the beam is having three supports support at a is a fixed support support at b is a hinge support and also at c we have a hinge support the loading conditions are that we have a, a uniformly distributed load acting between a and b and the span of this member a b is 15 feet and we have a point load of magnitude 10 kips and it is acting on the member bc of the structure and the total length of this member is 20 feet 10 plus 10 20 feet and this load is acting exactly at the middle of this span it means 10 feet from either support in fact both supports okay 10 feet from both supports so now uh, as we know that the very first step uh, okay and we, and we have to take the value of ei as constant okay we have to take this value of ei uh, as constant for both the members okay so now we know that the very first step of our stiffness method is to find out the uh, number of unknown displacements and the number of unknown displacements are coming from the degree of kinematic indeterminacy so it means that we have to find the value of the kinematic indeterminacy so for that we just discussed this uh, equation on the previous slides that it is equal to 3j minus r plus i in this case how many joints we have we have this one two and three so it means the total number of joints are three so this becomes three times three minus reaction so we have three reactions here at this support two here so three plus two five plus two seven so we have seven reactions support reactions here uh, and we have no uh, internal hinge here so the value of i becomes zero so this gave us uh, a value of two degrees. It means that there are two unknown displacements in this situation. Two unknown displacements, which is this rotation at this joint and rotation at this joint. Okay. So now let's proceed. And the second step. Uh, we have to specify the joint displacements by assigning coordinates. So we know that one joint displacement is, is at this joint and the other joint displacement is at this joint. So now we want to specify them. By specify means that we should now uh, denote that displacement by some, some letter and, and we should then give that displacement some coordinate, some number. So I call this unknown displacement to be 1. And this joint displacement, this rotation, this to be denoted by a coordinate 2. This is 1, this is 2. So I denote this theta through this d1 which is a rotation, which is a rotation. So this becomes my D1, and this becomes my D2. And both I am taking them as clockwise. I'm taking both as clockwise. What is D1? D1 is the unknown joint displacement, which is this rotation. What is this D2? This is this unknown rotation theta c and these are now the unknowns d1 and d2 these are the unknowns so the value of d1 and the value of d2 these are unknowns and we have to find these values of d1 and d2 okay now next restrain the specified joint displacements to obtain the restrained structure What we are saying here, we are saying that you have to restrain 
the specified joint displacements. What is our specified joint? This 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 displacement at D one, and this displacement at at two. So now we have to change. As you, you now you now remember that the step was to change the actual beam such that all the displacements become zero. So now we want this this theta b is is zero, this theta b, and this theta c is also equal to zero. So how can we do that? We can do that by replacing this hinged support by a fixed support. Hinged support by a fixed support. So that's how we do this. We replace this. Hinged by this fix, we replace this hinge by this fix support. So now these theta b's are now zero. Also compute the values of AD, which are the external actions corresponding to each joint displacement. So now once we have fixed this uh, joint, once we have fixed this joint. So now we have to find out whether there is any value of AD. And if you remember in the last discussion, uh, the value of AD was what? The value of AD was uh, the value of external action, and that external action is corresponding to the specified. So, so how many unknown joint displacements we have? We have this D1, and we have D2. So, is there any external moment acting here at D1, or any external moment acting at D2? Anybody? Is there any external moment acting at D1 or at D2? No. Yes. There is. There is no moment acting. No external moment acting. It means that the value of AD1 and AD2 both will be zero. AD1 is the value of external moment corresponding to D1. So if there was an external moment applied in the original structure, that uh, a five kip feet, let's say a five kip feet moment is acting uh, at this point B, for example, external moment in the original structure, so then we were supposed to take the value of A D one equal to that five kip feet. But we know that there is no external moment applied at this joint. Also, no external moment applied applied at this. Uh, AD1 and AD2 values, uh, they are zero because the the there is no external moment acting here. What is D1? D1 is the unknown joint displacement. This is this rotation. D2 is the unknown joint displacement at this C. And we are going to find out the values of D1 and D2. Once we find the values of D1 and D2, and then we can use these values of D1 and D2 in other equations to find out the values of all these unknown uh, joint reactions and all these things, shear and moments, all these quantities. Uh, okay, so from this step, what we did, we obtained our strain structure by removing the Actual given supports by those supports which restrain the uh, unknown displacements. So the unknown displacements are these displacements at B and C. So now we have restrained it by replacing the joint by this fixed end joints. Uh, and now we have shown those unknown displacements by D1 and D2. And we are saying that both the values of D1 and D2, D2, they are un they are unknown. We have to find them. But what are, what is the action corresponding to displacement? So the action corresponding to D1, there, is there any external action or any uh, in the original structure? No, there, this is zero. Is there any external action, uh, external moment at this point in the original structure? No, this is zero. So this is, it means AD1 and AD2 are zero. And that's how our restraint structure will look like. This is our restraint structure. Uh, if we remove the loadings and we fix all these, so now in the uh, in the uh, steps to follow, in the following steps, we are going to use this restraint structure. If you remember in the flexibility method, the structure we obtained in this step was the statically determinate structure. Uh, 
yes and and in here we have the restraint structure okay uh, now in the next step we have to compute the aerial matrix and now you should know that what is aerial aerial stands for the actions okay these are the actions corresponding to very important to 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 listen to this terminologies i'm using this is the action corresponding to the unknown displacements actions corresponding to the unknown displacements in the restrained structure when subjected to actual loads so what was our restrained structure this is now this was our restrained structure now if we uh, if we apply the actual external load so we have 2k per foot magnitude load uniformly distributed in in this span uh, over this span and now we have a point load acting at the middle of this span so we need now to find out the values of adl and adl are the fixed end actions why fixed end actions because we have to find the value of action corresponding to displacement so what is the value what is the displacement at this point this is d1 so what will be the action here the action will be moment so we need to calculate the moment at this at this support and the moment at this support see how we do this from here uh, what this formula is showing this formula is showing that if if a fixed ended beam is acted upon by this load w so the moment magnitude at ma this will be and at mb both opposite direction they will be given by w r square root l and this reaction value will be equal to w l over 2 how to find this you know this from your structural analysis one course you, you must have developed it there but here now we will be using it from that table directly so it means that uh, in the next step i need now to separate these spans so this become now two separate spans this is the span ab this is the span bc and now we want to find out the values of the aerial matrix so which are the fixed end actions so now we should find out the fixed end actions in this beam and fixed end actions in this beam so uh, let let's find out the fixed end actions in the first situation the first situation is this uh, this situation uh, in the first span ab which is 15 feet span uh, acted by this uniformly distributed load 2 kip per foot and the fixed end actions are these actions you know that these are the fixed end actions the values is picked from these to this table uh this is going to be wl square over 12 and this is also wl square over 12 what are the values of these reactions this is wl over 2 this is wl over 2 so if you put the values 2 is the uh value of w 15 is the span l so wl square over 12 you get 37.5 kp and this is acting uh, anti clockwise this moment is friction moment is acting clockwise and the same magnitude W L over two is this reaction two into fifteen over two. This becomes fifteen kips. This is also fifteen kips. This one. So these are the fixed in actions in the uh, beam A B. Now, what are the fixed in actions in the other span of the beam? So if you know there, there is a ten kip load acting at the center. So from the same table B one, there is a situation in which uh, the values of these moments will be equal to p1 l over 8 in which p is the magnitude of load here point load l is the total span of the beam which is 20 in this case so if you plug in these values p1 is 10 l is 20 divided by 8 so this becomes 25 kip feet similarly this is also 25 kip feet because this is acting uh, right in the center and the uh, reactions will be upward acting reactions they will be uh, 10 divided by 2 because it is p divided by 2 so this is 10 divided by 2 5 kips and 5 kips here also so now these are the fixed end actions uh in the in the second span of this structure now the question is that my adl matrix which i know are the values of fixed end actions so shall i take all these values as the fixed and as, as the adl values like i'm saying that 37.5 this 15 this 
this 37.5, this 5, this 25, uh, this 25, this 5. So uh, what I'm asking is that uh, my aerial matrix will consist of all these values or some specific values among these values. Any, any uh, comment? If you if you if you carefully observe this 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 text, so it, it is very clearly written here that the aerial matrix, which are the values of fixed end actions, which fixed end actions, they are actually corresponding to the locations of specified displacements. We have specified the displacement as D1 and D2 at this end. So now we have to take all those values of fixed end actions which are corresponding to the values of D1 and D2. We are not going to take the other fixed end actions. We have nothing to do with them. Okay, we will only be dealing with those values which are coming from this uh, beam and from this beam, but they are corresponding to D1 and D2. Okay? So uh, now it's, it should it it should be clear to all of you. Uh, now let's let's take the ADL one value. ADL one value should be the value of the fixed end action corresponding to the D one. So if you remember, our D one was in the clockwise direction here. We choose our D one to be acting clockwise here. So uh, what is the corresponding fixed end action here in this beam? Is it this fifteen kip? or 37.5 or both of course this is only 37.5 why because it is the value of the fixed end moment and we are only uh, we are only interested in the in these moments so uh, i'm taking it as positive why because this moment is exactly in the same direction as our assumed direction of d1 so d1 is positive is, is clockwise and this fixed end moment is also clockwise so our ADL1 value will be positive, OK? Now, if you see that this joint B is common between this span and also in this span, it means there are two fixed end moments in this at this joint. So for uh, from this span, we have taken this 37.5 value. Now we should look at this span, and we should see that what is the value of the fixed end moment coming from this span? So we can see that it is 25 kip feet, but it is acting anti-clockwise. You can see it is acting anti-clockwise. And what is the assumed direction of our D1? That is clockwise. This is anti-clockwise, but the assumed direction is clockwise. So it means we should take this as negative. So that's why I have taken this as negative 25. So if we subtract these, we get 12.5 12 kip feet value. This becomes the ADL1 value. Similarly, the ADL2 value, uh, we will be taking the ADL2 value from uh, this span. Why from this span? Because the D2 is acting at coordinate 2. Coordinate 2. D2 is acting. And we have chosen our D2 to be acting clockwise. And the fixed end moment coming from this span is also clockwise. And the magnitude is 25 kip feet. So this becomes our... Uh, ADL2 value, which is 25 kip feet. Okay, so this becomes our ADL matrix 12.5 and 25. 12.5 corresponding to D1 and 25 corresponding to D2. Okay, now in the next step, we compute the stiffness matrix. We compute the stiffness matrix because you know that if we change the beam such that we introduce a fixed end, a moment MB in one direction. Now we should introduce in the other direction also. So now this is the compensation we are doing here. So what we do here, we uh, this is the A, this is B, this is C, this is the restraint structure. What we do now in the step one of, in the part one of this step three, we rotate, we rotate this joint clockwise by a value of one. You remember that we, uh, in the previous explanation, uh, we took the value of theta to be equal to 1, and then we find out the value of small mb. So here, we need now to rotate the, uh, the, the joint 
here by a value of 1 and then we should find out all the uh, fixed end actions produced from this unit rotation okay so uh, apply a unit value of rotation apply a unit value of rotation where to apply this unit value of rotation corresponding to the specified displacement what is our specified displacement it is d1 and d2 so first we apply a unit rotation at d1 and then we apply a unit rotation at d2 so as we know that the direction of d1 is clockwise the rotation is also clockwise and the disturbance this rotation produces produce in in, in both these uh, spans uh, can be seen here that there is a moment produced this moment is corresponding to displacement of unit 1 of value 1 so this becomes our stiffness value these all these fixed end actions these are our stiffness values so uh, if we rotate it in this direction if we rotate it clockwise so this rotation will in, induce moments in the spans in the same direction so these are the moments clockwise uh, and now to keep the beam in equilibrium so as this is clockwise as this is clockwise so the the reactions these reactions should be uh, directed such that this clockwise this is uh, uh, this is compensated uh, so so how how can we compensate this clockwise moment we can compensate this clockwise moment by these reactions if they act in the opposite sense so that's why they are this is upward and this is downward because they will uh, introduce uh, a sense of moment in the uh, anti clockwise direction as the induced moment is clock in the clockwise direction so now if you look at this other span the induced moment is this uh, again in the clockwise direction because the rotation is clockwise and we have to then compensate this moment by this react these reactions which are acting anti clockwise so you know these values of the moments and the reactions from your analysis one course and also in the table before uh, in the recommended book it is given uh, that if you rotate this by some uh, magnitude of 1 so or by some magnitude of theta so what will be the values of moments 2e theta over l at the far end and 4e theta over l at the near end so near end means where we apply the rotation and far end means the other rotations which are at the and other end of the uh, beams and the reaction values are 6i 6ei theta over l square so now if we plug in these values 2ei theta over l this becomes 2ei over 15 uh, 4ei theta over l this becomes 4ei over 15 similarly 4ei over 20 2ei over 20 and this 6ei theta over l square this becomes 6ei over 20 square uh, and similarly these these become uh, 6ei over 20 square and 15 square okay we also call these fixed end actions, but they are produced by this unit value of rotation. If there was no rotation, there would have been no these uh, fixed end actions, okay? Because there is no external load acting. So now in the next step, we apply this unit rotation at the other end. Before this, let's let's pick the values. Let's pick the values of the stiffness coefficients. The first stiffness coefficient is S11. What do we mean by this 11? This first one means the, uh, the, the stiffness at location 1. The first one means location, the stiffness at 1 produced by the displacement applied at location one so this is the stiffness at one due to the displacement applied at one so we know that this is the small mb value coming from the unit rotation so this becomes our uh s11 uh, also we can see that on the uh, on the other part of the span there is also a moment mb small mb the value of that is also 4 at theta over L. So what will be the value of S11? The value of S11 will be uh, 
फोर या यूवर फिफ्टीन फोर या यूवर फिफ्टीन क्लॉक वाइज रोटेशन इज क्लॉक वाइज वी वन इज क्लॉक वाइज सो पॉजिटिव फोर या यूवर फिफ्टीन एंड फ्रॉम दी अदर स्पेन इट इज फोर या यूवर ट्वेंटी so we add these two and these this is small mb value this is small mb value so now the stiffness value is now consisting of the addition of both these values so this become 4 di over 15 and this becomes 4 di over 20 so when you add them the stiffness coefficient is 1 1 becomes 7 di over 15 become 7 di over 15 similarly the S two one means the stiffness coefficient at two, at coordinate number two, due to the displacement applied at location one. Stiffness at location two, due to displacement applied at location one. Okay, so uh, it means that what what is our location two? This is our location two. So. at location 2 the moment the small mb value which is coming from the unit value of displacement applied at 1 this is this theta 1 it is equal to 2 ei theta over l so s s21 will be equal to 2 ei theta over 20 this value i mean from here if anybody has any question you can ask here so this is clockwise so positive this is clockwise so positive Okay, if we have a situation in which any of them are anti-clockwise, then we have to uh, subtract them, right? To write them with negative sign. Okay, now let's move to the other uh, sub-step of this step three, in which now we have to apply a unit rotation corresponding to d two. So d two was clockwise at this end c. So now a unit rotation is applied at this joint. And the value of is asking that what about the vertical reaction? So uh, we are not taking the vertical reactions. Why? Because the uh, if you remember, the unknowns are the rotations, and the actions corresponding to the rotations are moments. Is it clear? so we will be taking those moments which are corresponding to our d1 and d2 we will not be uh, taking these uh, vertical reactions uh okay, let's move forward now uh here now we have to apply a unit rotation corresponding to d2 so now the values of stiffness will be 1 2 and 2 uh Two. Why one two? One two because eight location one value or the value eight location one coming from the displacement applied at location two. So now we have applied the displacement at location two, and we are looking for the value of uh, this this value at one. So the value at one is this two i theta over l. So this is two i theta over twenty. Becomes our S one two, and S two two. This value is coming from uh, the this four year heat over L. This moment. Okay, so now we are done with the stiffness matrix. Uh, all these values. So we have taken the I common. So this becomes our stiffness matrix. Very clear and very simple. Uh, what we are finding in this we are finding the values of fixed end actions and those fixed end actions which are corresponding to the specified displacements and from where these actions are coming they are coming from a unit value of rotation so we rotated this joint this produced fixed end actions these now we have to to we have to take we have to take the, those values of the fixed end actions which are corresponding to our d1 and d2 this value to to d1 and this to d2 so now we have taken these two and we are naming them we are naming them as s12 and s22 because s12 this is 81 due to 2 and this is 82 due to 2 very simple now let's move forward 
this is the equation which we developed last time on, in the previous slides. If you remember, the value of V is equal to the stiffness inverse times the AD minus ADL. Now we know all these matrices. D becomes D, this D is D1 and D2, and these, these are the unknowns. S is the stiffness matrix. AD are the actions, the external actions corresponding to the specified displacement in the original structure. And ADL are the uh, reactions corresponding to the uh, specified joint displacements in the restrained structure when acted up by the uh, external load. So now if we put the values here, uh, D1, D2, the stiffness values here, if we put them and then uh, take the inverse of this, if we take the inverse of EI, it becomes 1 over EI. AD1 and AD2, they are 0. ADL1 and ADL2 are 12.5 and 25. So this, if you, if you solve these matrices, you get D1 equal to 0 over, one, uh, 0 over EI and D2 equal to minus 1 over 25 over EI. So these now are our unknown displacements D1 and unknown displacements D2. Okay. These are our, our unknown displacements D1 and D2. Uh, now, after that step, once we find out the values of D, now we can put these values of D uh, this value of D in this equation, and we can find out the reactions. Okay. Uh, in the step number five, there will be two steps. In the first part, you can directly find out these reactions only and then with the help of these reactions you can then solve the whole structure manually or you can skip this step a and you can directly do the step b so let's 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 do it in step a and then do the step two or b also in the step a what i'm doing i am finding the reactions the upward reactions uh, at these supports. I'm not finding the other reactions, for example, moment. I'm not finding them. I'm just finding the reactions. And with the help of these reactions, then I can solve this whole structure manually. So because the axial reactions, they are zero, because I'm ignoring them. So uh, I'm because my coordinate at this joint was one, coordinate at this joint was two, that's why I am representing this upward reaction at this one to be AS1 and this to be AS2 and this to be AS2. So you should remember now that our AS1 location is this one at V, AS2 location is at C, and our AS3 location is at A. You should remember this. Now let's find out what is ASL, what is ASD. Let's quickly go through them. Very simple. This is the ASL matrix from where it is coming. Now it is coming from the step number two, where we applied uh, the actual load on the restrained structure and we find out the uh, fixed indexions. So now these are the fixed indexions from that step. Uh, but the difference is in the picking of values. If you remember, we picked these values from uh, this uh, analysis in that step, 37.5 and this 25. We added them last time, if you remember, and we also took this 25 value at this point. Now, what we what values we are interested in uh, here now? Can anyone uh, answer this? What should we pick here? We should pick the same moments, or we should pick some other things. I'm asking which reaction. So it means vertical reactions. Okay, reaction can be horizontal. It can be vertical. It can be uh, this moment also. So the reactions are we are interested in here are the vertical reactions. Why? Because our AS1 is a vertical reaction. So AS1 is a vertical reaction. It means ASL should also be a vertical reaction. So now corresponding to AS1 at B, uh, how many vertical reactions we have? Uh, we have this uh, vertical reaction at uh, this B here, this, this 15 kip. Also, we have this 5 kip. 
So 15 plus 5, this becomes 20 kip. So this is the ASL1 value. Now, what is the ASL2 value? ASL2 is corresponding to AS2. And AS2 was this, we assumed AS2 to be acting upward at joint B. So the reaction we are getting here, the upward vertical reaction, it is also acting upward. If it was acting downward, then we have to take it with a negative sign, remember. But it, as it is act, acting exactly in the assumed direction of our AS1, that's why we are taking it as a positive 5 kips. Also, our ASL3 value, which is corresponding to AS3 value, this is 15 kip acting upward, AS3 is upward, so this is positive. This becomes our ASL matrix. In the same way, we will take the ASD matrix uh, from the uh, step number 3, 3, 1, and 3, 2. Uh, we did already. already. Uh, what we did in the step number 3, 1, we rotated the beam clockwise here, the support clockwise by a uh, value of 1. And these are the fixed end moments and reactions here, other reactions. Uh, what values we are now interested in? We are interested in these vertical reactions, not in the moments. Why? Because our AS1 and AS2, these are vertical reactions. So the at B, we have these two vertical reactions, and they are acting in the opposite direction. Uh, this is acting upward. This is acting downward. So now our assumed direction of our AS1 the assumed direction of our AS1, uh, AS1 is upward. The assumed direction of our AS1, but uh, this, uh, this a, the assumed value of our AS1, if you look at here, this is upward. So we will be taking the upward as positive and downward as negative. So we have two reactions here, upward and downward. So 6 i over 15 squared will be taken as positive, and 6 i over 20 this will be taken as negative. Yes, now here we have the text. Here we go. This is the text. Okay, but this is the value of a is the 1, 1, and this is positive, this is negative, and the, if we subtract them, we get the value of EI uh, 7 over 600. This is the a is the 1, 1 value. Why 1, 1? Because at location a is 1, due to the rotation applied at location a is 1. Now, why ASD21? ASD21 is because at location 2, AS2, due to the uh, rotation applied at location AS1. So this is 6 EI over 20 square this reaction. This becomes uh, this value. Uh, now, this uh, EI will cancel out. And if you solve these matrices, you get the value of reaction at AS1 to be 21.87k. Similarly, A is 2 and A is 2. So now these become the values of our AS matrix. Now, if you don't do this, uh, after this step, you can now manually solve the whole beam using these values of the reactions. But if you want, don't want to do this and you want to uh, find the whole unknowns, uh, as we did in the flexibility method, through these AM1 and AM2 values, so we can do it. Uh, here also, as in, now we will be needing AML values and AMD values in this. Uh, so this is our AM1 upward acting reaction, AM2 just to the left and AM3 just to the right of this support. AM4 is the reaction at C. The moment is AM5, clockwise is positive. AM6 clockwise here, AM7 clockwise here. Now we want to find these values. We need now to find out the values of AML and AMD. How we do this? Exactly as the previous step. From the step number two, as we uh, applied the uh, load on the uh, actual load on the structure, and we find out the fixed inductions, now we have to pick the values corresponding to each AM value. So our AM1 is the here. The here is the value of AM1 acting upward. So we will take this reaction, AM1. AM2 is 15. Uh, what was our AM2? AM2 was just to the right of this, just to the left of the support. So just to the left of support, we have this reaction, which is 15 kip acting upward, so uh, acting upward here. Now, just to the right was our AM3. So AM3 will be this 5 kip. Similarly, AM4 will be this 5 kip. And AM5 will be this, this moment, because AM5 is our moment, which is clockwise. But here it is anti-clockwise, so we will write this with a negative sign. Here we go. Similarly, uh, this uh, AML6, which is just to the left of the uh, support B, so this is 37.5 acting clockwise, so positive. 
and AML7 is just to the right of the support B, uh, which was assumed to be clockwise, but here we have anti-clockwise fixed in moment, so this will be written with a negative sign. Similarly, we will take the values of AMD uh, from the step number 3, 1, and 3, 2. These are the AMD values when you apply a unit rotation, and then you write all these reactions corresponding to your AM values. So you get this matrix. I don't need to go in detail, I think. Should I go in detail uh, here? Uh, y is minus 3 over 200. This minus 3 over 200. This is the value of AMD31. Means at location AM3, due to unit displacement applied at 1. So unit applied at 1, unit displacement. Now location AM3. What was AM3 location? AM1, AM2, and AM3. This is our AM3. Why it is negative? Because our assumed direction of AM3 is upward. And this is downward. So we write this with negative sign. And it is minus 3 over 200. Because if you solve 6 by 20 square, you get 3 over 200. Okay. So similarly, you do this for the uh, unit displacement at the uh, location 2. And you find out all these values corresponding to AM1, AM2, up to AM7. So you now get this matrix AMD. Now if you put this in the equation AM, AML here, you get these values. This is AM1 value. This is AM2 value. This is AM3, AM4, AM5, 6, and 7. So these now our AM1 values. Okay. Now if we plot the uh, bending moment diagram here, so this is this is what I did in the SEP 2000. Uh, this these are the values of shear force and bending moment diagrams. Uh, so we are end up with the problem number one. I hope this is clear. Uh, and uh, inshallah, I'll see you next time in the next class. Uh, if you have any question now, you can ask.